Good morning, Lafayette family, and welcome to Sunday Worship, July 5th. And I remind you that Sunday Worship, Daily Messages, Sacred Music, and other content are available at FountainChurchTallahassee.org. I also remind you that your church needs your support during this coronavirus pandemic. We need your financial support and tithing and giving offerings is an important part of Christian worship and service. You can use the Givelify app on your smartphone. You can go and press the Give button on our website, or of course you can mail your donations or bring them by. We appreciate it greatly. Thank you for supporting Lafayette Presbyterian Church. Also today is Happy Birthday USA. It is 4th of July Sunday and we celebrate our great nation and the values and ideals that have made it what it is today, a beacon for freedom and justice around the world. Not perfect, but always striving to move forward. And I have a few quotes on freedom to celebrate this day. Abraham Lincoln said, those who deny freedom to others deserve it not for themselves and under a just God cannot long retain it. Adlai Stevenson said, my definition of a free society is a society where it is safe to be unpopular. Thomas Paine said, those who expect to reap the blessings of freedom must, like men, undergo the fatigue of supporting it. Franklin D. Roosevelt, in the truest sense, freedom cannot be bestowed, it must be achieved. And Robert J. McCracken, we on this continent should never forget that men first crossed the Atlantic not to find soil for their plows, but to secure liberty for their souls. And now I offer the peace of the Lord to my wife and give her the hug of fellowship and turn the service over to her. As always, we're going to start at least with a virtual hug until we can be together again. For our joys and concerns this morning, please uh, pray for Christy Stacy's sister-in-law, Charlotte Lehman who will be having kidney transplant surgery on July 22nd. Charlotte's donor is her brother, Earl Keister, so please keep Earl in your prayers also. Marlena Peacock Lockhart, Marie Peacock's granddaughter, has tested positive for coronavirus, so her wedding was on Zoom instead of being a live family event. Pray for Marie also because she's now in quarantine. And remember to pray for our church, our community, and our nation as we face the issues of racism, economics, politics, and pandemic. And now join me in the call to worship. It is good to worship together, Lord. Even if we cannot physically be together, we listen for your voice and are united by your spirit. Lead us, Lord. We want to walk with you humbly and closely daily. Praise your name. Amen. And join me now in the prayer of confession. Merciful God, you see deep into our hearts and know us better than we know ourselves. Forgive us, we pray, for the times we turn away from your word. Remind us that you are the Lord our God, our eternal protector and guide. For our impulses of anger and jealousy, scorn or spite, grant us your healing peace. 
for our resistance to forgiveness, generosity, and mercy. Inspire us with your compassionate love. Love us, redeem us, and sustain us, we pray. Amen. The Assurance of Pardon Hear the good news. Who is in a position to condemn us? Only Christ can judge us. Christ died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. Christ forgives us. Amen. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord, we thank you that on this Independence Day Sunday, we can revel in religious freedom and in the many other freedoms pioneered by our great nation. And we promise, Lord, we pledge our lives as Christians that we will continue to move forward and to strive to let justice roll down like waters. We pray for our great nation in this time of turmoil, strife, and pandemic, because Lord, we believe in this country, even as we trust in you to lead us through. May we remember that the values and ideals we espouse as Americans were first foundational truths of our faith, and when we have gotten into trouble as a nation and a culture is when we have strayed too far from your word, your will, and your way. Bless us and celebrate with us, Lord, the birthday of our country. And we pray, Lord, that many years to come will show forth the promises implicit in our founding. And may freedom ring from sea to shining sea. We offer this prayer in the precious name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for today comes from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 19. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another, we played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Sometimes you just can't win. The Pharisees in the time of Jesus believed themselves to be the shepherds of the nation. They trusted in their own piety and in their adherence to the law. And they did not appreciate other figures stepping forth to threaten their high place. And so John the Baptist, who was very popular with the people, was criticized for being too austere, following the law too closely. Well, he was beyond the pale. He was out there. He's not like one of us, they said. Well, then what about Jesus? Jesus, who lived a fairly normal life with everyday, ordinary people. Well, they criticized that. 
Oh, he's a drunkard and a glutton. He eats with tax collectors and sinners. He's not one of us. You just can't win. And of course, they excused themselves when they invited Jesus into their homes. That was different. A man is judged by the company he keeps, unless you're talking about us. No, to the Pharisees, Jesus and John the Baptist just couldn't win. Everything for them was a test, a test for Jesus. A number of years ago, there was a man named Harry that I knew, and he had a test. Before anyone would receive a marriage proposal from him, that woman would have to prove that she could carry her half of a canoe and that she loved the outdoors and boating and fishing as much as he did. And to this point, Harry hadn't found anyone. Then came Barbara, and she was everything he thought a woman ought to be. But he took her out to test her anyway. What he didn't realize, she had a test for him as well. When they went into the great outdoors, she said, Harry, I love collecting rocks. And so everywhere they stopped, she would pick up rocks and put them in his backpack for him to carry. Well, Harry didn't appreciate that because as they hiked, his pack got heavier and heavier, and at the end of the day, oh, he was so relieved to put that pack down. And he let her know that she had passed his test. And she smiled and said, Harry, you passed mine as well. You took on all those burdens and never complained. Well, Jesus knows that we all carry burdens and they're not quite as easy as taking off a backpack. Jesus knows that sometimes in our lives we just can't win. No matter how loving we are, whether it's with family or friends, someone will rise up and make our lives difficult. No matter how we strive to work hard and excel and succeed, there will be setbacks and hurdles and obstacles. And even when we didn't do anything wrong, a pandemic has closed our church and made it difficult for us to worship together, although we celebrate the privilege of worshiping online. The message for today is clear. Those who were willing to open their hearts and their ears to Jesus, those who were willing to follow John the Baptist down to the Jordan, those who were willing to be with Jesus all the way to the cross, indeed, to pick up their own crosses and follow him, found blessings beyond what anyone could have imagined. There are always excuses in our lives. We hear the message, but we don't like the messenger. Remember, every figure in your life is right some of the time, whether they're a family member, a friend, a neighbor, someone you don't know, or even a politician. They're always right some of the time. But remember, no matter how enamored you are of your particular thoughts and practices, you aren't right all of the time. Sometimes the word of God comes in a package with which we're uncomfortable. The Pharisees weren't comfortable with Jesus, so they wouldn't listen. I pray that the word of God for you today even if it is at times uncomfortable, even untenable in your mind and imagination, that you will listen, open your heart and follow and receive God's beautiful blessings. Let us pray. Lord, sometimes we just can't win, but we pray, Lord, that we would listen, that we would open up our hearts Sometimes your word will come 
in uncomfortable or unfamiliar situations and circumstances, sometimes we won't be ready to hear, to accept, to adopt, but we pray that you will bless us and that you will inspire us to follow your word, your will, and your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I charge us to go forward from this place, ready to hear and accept the word of God in whatever guise it may appear. And on the birthday of our great nation, may we strive after the ideals of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this hour and forever. Amen.